stirring nights of horror and devastation. I shall never forget, as I walked the streets and the alleys of our city during the night of the Great Fire, my almost unbearable feelings of emotion as I watched the calm courage of all who had duties to perform. Everybody worked with absolute and complete indifference to the bombs which fell and which threatened as they went about their duties. I was so profoundly moved by the calm, the unflinching courage of the teeming thousands of the East End boroughs on mornings after devastation of their homes by landmines and bombs. A mayor of a borough, as they are at the present time. The beauty of Paris is that Napoleon III planned it with ambition and vision, and Haussmann's plans were fully adopted and given play. We must not, however, wantonly destroy ancient and irreplaceable buildings for new thoroughfares. Again, on traveling from one side of the United States to the other, we are immensely impressed by San Francisco's bridges and its wonderful flyover roads. That's part in any scheme which is to be considered. It is perhaps natural that the thoughts of inhabitants of London should, in consideration of the country's problem of post-war reconstruction, turn first to the capital city. The interest has passed. In the ancient city of London, so small a fraction of the total area of this great metropolis, but so great a living part in the life of the British Empire, are enshrined the age-old traditions of the people of London. And from the time when the burgesses maintain their privileges and their rights against the might of a Norman king, determination has characterized the <coughs> Londoner. This same spirit will be manifested in the replanning and recreation of the ways they tread and the buildings they occupy. High explosive and fire may bring to the ground old and new buildings alike. The ancient and beautiful edifices which have been cherished through the centuries may be reduced to dust and ashes, but the demolition of units of stone and brick will not destroy the British people's spirit. <coughs> the new London the new cities and villages of our land will rise fairer and more spacious as places where the people may live, may work, and may play, each in its appropriate place in worthy inheritance. The Lord Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for the Right Honourable Lord Reed of Stonehaven. The right Honourable Lord Mayor, the Right Honourable Chairman of the County Council, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen. I've never been, never been at one of these parties before. I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Except to pass on the remark of the Lord Mayor. I said to him, you ever been here before, my Lord Mayor? And I gathered he had it. I said, do you think you could make this audience laugh? <laughs> and he said, no, I don't think I could, but I think you could. <laughs> Last Sunday I happened to be in the city of Edinburgh. And odd though it may appear to some of you, I went to church in the evening. <laughs> My attention was by no means concentrated all the time as it should have been, but there came the final hymn, an old-fashioned, if you like, sentimental hymn of childhood, lead kindly light. Well, I thought, Where and who and what is the light that surely we must seek? And unless we seek and find, there we are faced with the alternative signs to which I've just referred. Yeah. 
Many moors and fens and crags and torrents still to cross. But cross them we shall, and has anybody got any doubt whatever about victory, final and complete? Beyond victory? Heaven grant that we've got the light, the kindly light, that will illumine the drawing boards of those who plan and the tools of those who build, that things may never be so again. I leave it there for others more worthy than I to take up the tale, for I certainly can't. But the foundations of this city of London, the foundations of our life, have to be stronger than any concrete, or all the gold of the new Jerusalem can furnish. But on that, on the material side, but if you like reading between the lines and giving it a metaphysical meaning too, I leave with you Stevenson's ambition, his father's ambition in the construction of Scarivar, the lighthouse which his father built. These words, to rear a tower, which from its wet foundations to its crown of glittering glass stands in the sweep of winds, immovable, immortal, eminent. Accepted Miss Thoyle's invitation 